Hi everybody, Cameron Ellis here with another tutorial for WSV3, and in today's video we're going to be talking about how to make a background layer mask. This is kind of taking it a step further than just the drop shadow layer. This is another way to really highlight those specific counties that you're covering and really make it even more the main focus than just having that drop shadow layer. Just another source of eye candy as it may be referred to as. And I'll give you some examples here of how this can be put into use. So one example is like if you're using one of the models, for example, in this tutorial we'll use the GFS model. Turn on reflectivity, you can see that we have the rain visible on here within just the specified counties. And outside of that, you kind of have that clouded look to where it's masking up that specific section of the map and only focusing on those specified counties. So just another way to kind of really hone in on the area that you're talking about. And so then another example is a severe weather map. And so you can see the colors are very much so visible within the specified counties. And outside of that, you can clearly see the mask where it's darkening those areas so they are not necessarily the main focus. And then another instance you could use this in is weather alerts. This is dealing with a tornado watch and a wind advisory. You can see that the colors are more clear within the specified counties and a little bit darker on the outside of that. So those are just some examples of how this can be put into use as far as the overall idea of the background layer mask. So that in mind, let's get into how we make this specific layer. So for part one of this tutorial, we're going to need to gather some software. The first one we're going to need to find is QGIS and we're going to need to do that by opening up a web browser. I'm using Google Chrome, but any web browser will do. You'll just need to be able to access a search engine, or you could just easily go up here to the URL bar and just type in the words QGIS, and then it will bring up the program on specifically what I'm using is the Google search engine. And we'll go to the first link, or it may be further down depending on how your search engine brings it up on the page. But what we want to do is we want to go to the QGIS website. Another way to get there is just to go to QGIS.org and then right on their home page is exactly what we need which is the download button. So you'll hit the download now button and then it'll send it to wherever you have your download set to go to. You're going to want to find the program and then you will want to install it and the instructions are rather simple. Just follow the installer's instructions as it's guided and then once it's done, then you'll be ready to use that program. So that is the first program that we will need for this tutorial. So the next thing that we will need is not necessarily another piece of software or another computer program. We're going to need a file that we will utilize within the QGIS program. And so what you're going to want to do is go back into your web browser once again. It could be simply using Google or just go up to your ULR bar or another search engine. We just simply need to be able to search the following terms. I'm going to do it right here on the Google search bar. You're going to want to type in census map shapefile. And so then you'll search for that. And then we're going to want to look for specifically the file that or link rather that says cartographic boundary files and the census.gov link so you'll click on that so then we want to land on this page here and then we'll scroll down and we want the county section we want the 500k resolution it will be in the form of a zip file so you'll click on that and then it will be sent to your downloads or wherever you have your downloads specifically set up to go to. And then we will utilize that file a little later in QGIS. You will not need to open the zip file. You can leave it just as it is in the downloads folder because we're going to literally drag it right into QGIS. I'll show you more on that coming up here in just a little bit when we get into that part of the tutorial. So once you have downloaded QGIS and you've installed the program and you've also downloaded the files from census.gov, 
should now be ready to open up QGIS and get started on the process of this tutorial. So once you open QGIS, you will get a home screen that looks like something like what you see right now. You'll want to go where it says Project Templates and or find where it says New Empty Project. Once you click on that, you'll want to double click it. So then you'll have a new empty project open up. From there, you'll want to then find where you saved or downloaded that file from census.gov. And you'll want to locate it, and it should be called something like CB underscore 2018 underscore US underscore county underscore 500K. You will then click on that and drag it right into QGIS program in the layers panel of the program, and then you'll get a dialog box and you just hit OK. So that's the simple steps for bringing it into there. You don't have to unzip the file or do anything else with it. You just drag it and drop it straight into the program. So now we have a layer to work with, but before we can actually do anything to it, we need to be able to edit the layer. And right now the edit pencil is grayed out. In order to fix that, we gotta go up to layer and then go down to save as a geo package and then you'll want to go where it says file name and right next to it's a box with three dots you'll hit that and it'll allow you to browse somewhere where you can save the file and then you'll want to title that file name and so then once you've titled it whatever you want to save it as then you'll hit save and then go down to the bottom and hit ok and so then it's going to take a moment and create that file. You don't have to do anything at the moment as it will bring it straight into the program as it did. Now you should have two layers in the layer panel, one being the original and one being the new layer. We want to uncheck the box of the original layers. We no longer need to see that layer. The one that we want to see is the new one we created because that is the editable layer. So now the pencil that we need to be able to click on to be able to turn on editing is now available. So click on that pencil. And then you're going to want to zoom in to the area that corresponds with your coverage map, that being the specific counties that you want to cover. And then we're going to go and find the highlight tool. Now, I have the most recent copy of QGIS, so therefore... My highlight button is on the top bar here, kind of towards the end of the front, uh, first row, but it may be in a different spot on your program. just depends on how you have it set up or which version that you have, but either way, you just need to be able to locate that highlight button. So now you're going to want to hold down the shift key and just start clicking on all of your counties that you specifically cover within your area. All right, and once you have done that, then you will hit the delete key, and you should have a nice blank area, and yes, the goal is to delete that specific set of counties, because that is the surrounding, as far as where the uh, mask that is that we are making is going to surround the counties that you have already made for the drop shadow and counties map, and if you're not understanding what that specifically is please see my previous tutorials uh, for a better understanding of that so now that we've done that part we now want to zoom back out and recenter the map so we can see the entire thing and you may have to uncheck the highlight tool and go up and hit the pan map tool that kind of looks like a, a hand so you can be able to move it around to where you can see the entire map because now we need to highlight the entire thing. And so now that that is done, we want to go to edit at the top and then edit geometry. Now, again, depending on what version of QGIS that you're using, the specific thing that we're looking for may be exactly in this edit drop down. You may not even have to go to edit geometry, but for the one that I'm using, it is under edit geometry. And then you'll go down and we want to find where it says merge selected features so you're going to click that and this process may take a few moments depending on the processing speed of your computer and so 
therefore for the purposes of time and for this tutorial I'm going to come back once this is completed. Alright so once you have completed the process of merging the selected features you will get a dialog box you'll just simply hit OK and then you will come out with a result like what you see now on the screen where everything is all one piece. So now that that has happened we will go up to the edit pencil and we will save our edits. I'll turn the pencil off and give it a moment to save and once that has been complete we want to then go up to layer and we want to go down to save as. This time instead of a geo package format we want to save it as a ESR shape file and then in the file name box right next door to it is a box with three dots. You want to browse to an area where you can save it and then you will title it as whatever works for you. And then once you've done that hit save and then OK. And there we have it. So we now have our shape file. So we have a new layer now in the layers panel. We don't really need to do anything further from here. We are pretty much done with QGIS. And we are now ready to go into WSV3 and bring it in. Alright, so now that we are in WSV3, we're ready to import our new layer that we just created from QGIS. In order to do that, we need to go to the settings in WSV3. In order to get there, there's a couple ways you can do that. You can go up to where it says WSV3 in the upper left. Hit that and it'll bring a drop down menu. You want to hit program settings or if you want, you could also hit control and O on the keyboard at the very same time. And then it will bring up a dialog box. You want to hit the GIS system tab and then shape file layers. And then once you're in there, you will then see a couple different things here. You'll see a box with all the layers you currently have in WSV3 as well as a box that shows a file name highlighted. You will then see a button right next to that highlight. You want to click that. That will allow you to search for new files. You will then want to find where you saved that file from QGIS. You want the one specifically that right next to the file name after it has a .shp or a shape file. You only want that one. These other ones will not work within WSV3. You want just the shape file. You will hit open and then from there you will then hit add and then once you have done that you'll want to click on that layer and you want to make sure that it is turned on and then you will go to style editor you want to make sure you have a filled polygon and then you'll want to probably tweak these settings to make sure that it looks for the most part as close to what I have here but it may have some slight differences and we'll go through that here in a moment but for what I did is I edited the color, so you could edit the color. And so depending on what your map style is, it may determine what kind of color you need around it. I used a little eyedropper and just clicked on a part of the map outside of my county's area. And you could even click in the county's area. You just want that general color. And then I made it more of a lighter shade because it kind of came in dark when I first did it. And so then once I did that I hit OK and then the alpha what that does is it turns it up and down if I make it all the way up then you can't see anything on the outside of the counties you could either do that or you could turn it down until you're content if you want to see uh, throughout the rest of the map which I would recommend keeping it at that just so that the rest of the map is visible and of course unless you don't prefer that it's whatever you prefer in the end so you may have to tweak some of these settings just a little bit to get it the way that you want it to be so once you're done with that we can close out of all of that another thing to note that you might come across is you may have it where it's not in the right order in terms of layers as far as the new layer that we just brought in might be on top of the counties to where you can't even see the counties in order to fix that, you just go over here into the Layer Orders tab, and you have all these different layers, and they're titled by what they are in terms of you have the different uh, tabs and things up here at the top as far as for radar and the models and the Storm Prediction Center outlooks. 
all those different things are over here to where you'll have to reorder them to where you can visibly see things. And I can do a further tutorial on that if that is something uh, everybody would be interested in. But uh, for the purposes of trying to keep this one on the shorter side as far as not making it too, too long, I'm going to uh, hold off on that. But in a sense, you just want to make sure that these things are in proper order to where it can be visible. So like I have the geographic lines of polygons, which controls everything in terms of the GIS parts right next to one another. And then I believe it's anything underneath that then is going to be what's underneath it. And so I'll show you an example in this tutorial of kind of what things should look like uh, once it is uh, within the correct order. And so this is what it should look like. This is the GFS model for an example. So this is looking several days from now in the specific area of the world as far as within the U.S., and it's uh, showing a little bit of rain and as you can see it is visible within these counties and then on the outside of that it kind of masks it or kind of hides it rather to where it's a little less visible and it just highlights the general county area as far as just that way it's focusing in on only the area that you want to your viewers to see or that you are talking about and so that's kind of the purpose all in all for this specific layer that we just added. So this concludes the tutorial for the layer mask for the continuation of the drop shadow. And this is again just kind of adding on to what we have made from the county's map to the drop shadow and to now this. So I think this kind of concludes this three-part setup in terms of GIS layering. If you have any further questions, feel free to drop those down in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.